Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we're making Sylvester. He's large, uh, so I can't quite fit him into frame. Let's get right into this. So in this video you're going to need some black and white felt to make the eyes and you're going to need a glue gun. The yarn I'm using for the white part of him is Bernat Super Value. The black I'm using is a Craftsmart Value. The red I use for his nose is just a Craftsmart Value and the color is tomato. And I've chosen to go with a DK weight for the hair because it brushes out better than the other ones. And everything is getting built with a five millimeter H hook. So get your black. The first thing we have to do is build a body bridge. That's what I call it. And that's the space filler for in between his legs. So you're gonna start with a chain four Make sure this is decently long. And you're going to do three single crochets back up because you only have three working chains. Chain one, turn your work. And for the next six rows, you're just going to Put one single crochet in each of these three stitches. That's my six rows. I'm going to fasten off with a sewing tail for this side. A little sewing tail for that side so we can sew it correctly to the guy. The raw edge gets sewn to the leg, so it's only this wide between the legs. This raw edge gets sewn to the legs after we make them. So, moving on. The feet are all white. So I'll get you white. We're going to start with a magic ring of six single crochets. Your next round is going to be two single crochets in each stitch. We are building this in amigurumi, so there's no slip stitching and there's no chaining. You go right into your next stitch and you start to build. So after the first stitch, that's when the marker goes. Stitch number two can go into that same space. Two single crochets in each space around will give you 12 stitches. Your next round is going to be one single crochets and an increase. This will bring it up to 18 stitches. So that's number one. So your next stitch will get the increase, which is two single crochets in the same space. And repeat. Next round is going to be two single crochets and an increase, and this will bring it up to 24 stitches. That's number one. That's number two. And then this stitch will get the increase, which is two single crochets in the same space. And repeat.
Your next round is going to be three single crochets and an increase. That's number one with your marker. That's three single crochets and then this next stitch will get the increase of two single crochets in the same space. And repeat. This will bring you up to 30 stitches. Your next round is going to be four single crochets and an increase. So your next round, your last increase round is going to be five single crochets and an increase. So bring it up to 42 stitches. That's number one. That's five single crochets and then your increase of two single crochets in the same space. And repeat. So this is what you should have. For the next four rows, you're going to put one single crochet in each of these 42 stitches. And I will see you on the other side. So this is the end of my four rows. We're going to start to decrease now. Yes, this is a foot, I know. You're thinking it's absolutely ginormous, but this is what the foot looks like. So we need to make this part big and kind of partially sloppily fill it. And then we're going to suck all this in to make the foot. So that's why we make it so big. Plus he's got big feet. So we're going to start decrease. We're going to do a five single crochet decrease. That's number one. That is my five single crochets. So I'm doing decrease after decrease after decrease. And when I do that, I like to do invisible decreases. So I like to pop into the front loop of the first stitch, pop around to the front loop of the second stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, finish the stitch. So that's an invisible decrease because it'll leave these back loops back there to fill in the gaps. So it is hard to see. So five single crochet decrease will bring you down to 36 stitches. If you don't want to do the invisible decrease, just do your own decrease. So your next decrease is going to be four single crochets and a decrease, and this will bring you down to 30 stitches. Number one, that's four single crochets and your decrease. Your next round is going to be three single crochets and a decrease. And this will bring you down to 24 stitches. That's number one. 
the three single crochets and then your decrease. So that's our big toe part. So now we just have to build the foot and the heel. So for the next four rows, I just want you to put one single crochet in each of these 24 stitches. And I will see you on the other side. So this is the end of my fourth row. So this is what you should have. We can start stuffing this part, but I don't want you to overstuff it. Like I don't even want you to fully stuff it because it'll be more difficult to do this to it if it's like hard stuffed. Because we kind of need this to bulge out a little bit like that. So. So mine's pretty squishy still, if that's any indication. So we're going to decrease. We're going to do a two single crochet decrease. This will bring you down to 18 stitches. That's number one. That's number two. And then your decrease. So we're going to do, that's it, um, as far as our numbers go, you have 18 stitches for the next four rows. You're just going to put one single crochet in each of these 18 stitches and that'll be our foot. So this is the end of my fourth row and I'm going to fasten off. We're going to cinch the rest of this closed. So you just need a cinching tail. So let's finish stuffing this. You can stuff this part normally. It's just the, the front part that I didn't want stuffed. I wanted it light. So mine's a little overstuffed. I'll just push it down as I go. So <clears throat> we're just cinching this. So in the front loop, out the front loop. All the way around, in and out. So when you're all the way around, you can pull. So I like to weave around the hole because it makes it look better. And then I can pop across and make my knot. So, <clears throat> once 
once you're satisfied, you can kind of move your stuffing around too. So that's your foot. So go ahead and make your other foot and then I'll meet you right back here and we can do the black parts to make it actually look like a foot. All right, so now that you've done your other foot, you want to take some of your black. Now, I went around twice. My black is actually quite thick, and I still went around twice. So this is a Craft Smart, and if anybody's used Craft Smart at any time in their life, they know it's a little bit thicker than most yarns. It's not worsted, but it is a little bit thicker. So, from the Magic Ring... Between, well, between the 8th and ninth row, ninth row around there, that's where I went in. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I'm going to pop up in my ninth row somewhere. Leave some of this hanging at the back. So you're going to come down and you're going to find a spot that you want to go back up. And you want to come back up. In the same hole. Sorry, not sure if I was on camera for that. So go down and find your way back up. You can pull. And then go back down but come up three stitches over in the ninth row. And then you're gonna do it again. Give it a nice pull. So when you go back down the second time, you're going to pop back out in the hole you started in. <clears throat> and that's how we're going to do Sylvester's foot, just like that. So now that you're back out, We're going to tie these in a knot just to secure it. So first knot's loose. Second knot is tight. And then you can just weave this away. By going down the same hole. Make sure you pull that knot down. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm going to lose my voice. Still trying to get over COVID. And that's been the biggest problem is my voice. So not ideal for somebody that films videos for a living. Oops. I'm sure there's no black showing. And that is how we're going to do the feet. So... Now that we're done, we're going to move on to the um, the little legs. 
<laughs> the little legs, they're so tiny. So starting with your black, we're going to do a magic ring of eight single crochets. If, again, you don't care about doing the magic ring, then do a chain two and put eight single crochets into that chain, the first stitch. That's my eight single crochets. I'm going to pull this. You're going to do two single crochets in each stitch around, which will give you 16 stitches. After your first stitch, that's when your marker goes in. Stitch number two can go in that same space in each space around. Pull your middle closed. You can weave this in in the next round if you want to. Your next round is just going to be one single crochet in each of these 16 stitches. Your next round is going to be one single crochet as in an increase. This will bring it up to 24 stitches. That's your one single crochet. So your next stitch will get the increase of two single crochets in the same space. And repeat. Your next round is going to be one single crochet in each of these 24 stitches. Your next round is going to be two single crochets and an increase and this will bring it up to 32 stitches. That's number one. That's number two. And then your increase of two single crochets in the same space. And repeat. So your last round is going to be one single crochet in each of these 32 stitches and you're saying this can't be the leg, it's too small. It's the leg. He doesn't have much leg. If you take a pitch, uh, look at a picture of Sylvester, he doesn't have very tall legs. So that is it. You can fasten off. Don't worry about a sewing tail because we sew from here. So we'll just get an extra piece and reattach. So just fasten off normally. So I don't want you to fasten off your other one. So go ahead and make your second piece and when I meet you back here, we're still going to be attached to it.
So I am just finishing off my other leg and I have to stay attached to it. So these little guys get sewn with a match or stitch or whatever kind of stitch you want to do like this. And then we're going to start building the body. So that's what I want you to do next is to get some black. However much you think you're going to need to do a mattress stitch. You're going to make a slip knot on one end. And then the other end. Because I work out of the middle of my yarn, I'm able to grab from the outside. So, you're probably going to be sewing literally the second row up. So I would attach, go through the loop. You're going to make a knot, double knot. And then you're ready to start. Get that out of the way. So I'll go as far back as you can with this to start. You're going to grab a couple of pieces or a post of your white foot. This is just for anybody that doesn't know how to do a mattress stitch because that's what I'm doing. And then you're going to come up here, staying in the same line that you reattached in, and you're going to grab a piece of the leg. And that's all you're going to do. So just to make sure that you're centered, just try to stay in the same general area. So grab another piece of the foot, and another piece of the leg and you're going to do this all the way around now you don't have to pull right away you can pull in a little bit that's what makes a mattress stitch so versatile is you don't have to pull right away so i can tell when i straighten it out to where i want it that i'm going to start turning a corner here so i'm going to want to kind of do a sideways stitch And again, just make sure you're staying in the same row. And you can pull any time. So usually when I get a side done, now I'm going to pull on that. And that sucks that right down up against the foot and you can't see my stitches or anything. So I'm all the way around. I'm going to tie these now in a knot. And that pulls it right in. Oops. So I'm going to make it a double knot now that everything's pulled in and good to go. Cut a little bit of this off so I can weave. So that's my, that's my leg sewn to my foot. 
So it just takes a little bit of time and a little bit of care to get it to look like that. So now we do our other one that's still attached. So that's my both my feet and my legs all done. I think they're pretty even. So this is going to go on this side obviously because I'm just going to try to, no maybe not. So find where you're going to because we do need to do the body bridge. So this body bridge that we originally built, this raw side will go on to the leg like this so these these stitches three and three will go front and back and that's how i want you to sew that on There we go. So now we've got our body bridge done. So we have our leg gap and we can start building the body. So your first round is going to be one single crochet in each stitch. I want you to get, and do your best, to get 56 stitches. So there's three stitches across the um, <clears throat> leg, the body bridge, sorry, not the leg gap, the body bridge. So that's 56 stitches for me, just using the stitches, no sew spots, putting three stitches here and here, like I'm supposed to. So now we're going to start to increase because he kind of starts off and goes wide, like haunches almost. So we're going to do a six single crochet increase and this will bring it up to 64 stitches. That's number one. That is six single crochets. And then the next stitch will get the increase of two single crochets in the same space. And repeat. There we go. Your next round is going to be seven single crochets and an increase. So 
So, you should have 72 stitches. For the next four rows, you're just going to put one single crochet in each of these 72 stitches, and I will see you on the other side. So that is my four rows. So this is what you should have. So we're going to start to decrease a little bit because he's got his big hips and then he kind of comes in here, or his haunches, and then he kind of comes in a little bit. So we're going to do a seven single crochet decrease because that's the last increase we did. So this will take you back down to the 64 stitches you had before. That is number one with your marker. That's my seven single crochets and then my decrease. Still going to be my invisible decreases done in my front loops. And repeat. So your next round is going to be one single crochet in each of these 64 stitches. So your next round is going to be six single crochets and a decrease. This will bring it back down to 56 stitches. That's number one. That is six single crochets and then your decrease. And repeat. So I should have 56 stitches again. So for the next three rows, we're just going to put one single crochet in each of these 56 stitches. So this is the end of my three rows. So we're going to decrease two more times and then we're going to do 20 rows. So that's where I'm going to leave you. So two more decreases. The first one is going to be five single crochets and a decrease. And this will bring you down to 48 stitches. So we're getting to the torso. That is five single crochets, markers number one, and then your decrease. And repeat. next decrease round is going to be four single crochets and a decrease and this will bring you down to 40 stitches and that's as far as we go for the torso this number one 
That's four single crochets and then your decrease. So before we start the 20 rows, I mean, I'll meet you right back here, but we're going to stuff this. So we should have 40 stitches. We're going to stuff this. And I know it feels like it's really leaning back, but it will be completely different when you stuff it. Because you're going to stuff the foot forward and the body forward purposely. Pack it down pretty good in those legs. Now you can keep packing it down as you go. For the next 20 rows, this is what you should have. That's what it should look like. I mean, mine's not completely stuffed, but you get the idea. So, for the complete, for the, for the complete, for the next 20 rows, you're just going to put one single crochet in each of these 40 stitches. And I will see you on the other side. Stuff as you go. So I'm just coming to the end of my 20 rows and I've been stuffing as I've gone. So that's the shape when you, when you stuff and I'm stuffed all the way down here but loosely so when I, so my feet still, you know, move and my doll can kind of sit up. So that's the shape. I get it all in kind of haunches and then the body so that's how I want you to stuff it if you overstuff it you're gonna see a little bit of white stuffing through now the back's not really a super big deal the front or it is a super big deal the front gets a white belly patch anyway but I would just not overstuff it anyway so we're gonna start to decrease And we're going to do a three single crochet decrease. This will bring you down to 32 stitches. So that's number one. Back out just a bit. That's three single crochets and then your decrease. So I'm still doing my invisible decreases. Now we're not stacking these de decreases so it doesn't really matter for you. I don't know what just happened there. I did not do my decrease properly. And now my loop is all frayed. So one, two, three. Let's try this again and a decrease. All the way around. Uh, like I was saying, we're not stacking them. There's going to be a single crochet row in between. And you'll know what I mean when we get to it. So your next round is just going to be one single crochet in each of these 32 stitches. So our next decrease is going to be two single crochets and a decrease and this will bring you down to 24 stitches. That's number one with your marker. That's number two and then your decrease. And repeat.
So that's my 24 stitch. For the next two rows, you're just going to put one single crochet in each of these 24 stitches. And I will see you on the other side. Okay, so this is the end of his body. We're going to start the head. So I want you to finish stuffing this. So you will have the opportunity to finish stuffing in this. What's going to end up being the neck area, but put, put whatever you comfortably can in there. You still got to crochet, so... Do what you're comfortable with. So that's the shape. Alrighty. So we're going to start the head. We have 24 stitches currently. And this next round is going to give us 48 because we're going to double everything. So two single crochets in each stitch all the way around to start the head. So that's two single crochets in each stitch around. This is what it's going to look like. So for the next five rows, I want you to put one single crochet in each of these 48 stitches. And I will see you on the other side. So this is the end of my five rows. And we're going to decrease the next round, but this is what you should have so far for his head. So the next round is going to be two single crochets and a decrease. And this will bring you down to 36 stitches. Your next two rounds, you're going to put one single crochet in each of these 36 stitches. So this is my two rows. Your next round is going to be, we don't have to worry about stuffing it yet. Your next round is going to be four single crochets and a decrease, and this will bring you down to 30 stitches. There we go. So for the next two rows, you're going to just put one single crochet in each of these 30 stitches. So this is the end of my two rows. Um, I'm going to stuff it a little bit because we're just going to continue to decrease. Make sure you're getting into this neck area really good so that there's no wobbles. So I think I'll just worry about more later. For now, that's good. We're going to do uh, our next round. 
is going to be three single crochets and a decrease. This will bring you down to 24 stitches. So for the next two rows, you're going to put one single crochet in each of these 24 stitches. So this is the end of my two rows. Your next round is going to be two single crochets and a decrease. This brings you down to 18 stitches. So, if you have 18 stitches for the next two rows, you're going to put one single crochet in each of these 18 stitches. So, this is the end of my two rows. We can stuff it some more. If you wonder why it's teardrop shape, it's because that's the shape we need. So don't overstuff this. He has these great big cheeks and then this little tiny head. So that's about the shape you should have currently. So we're going to do a one single crochet decrease. for our next round. So your final round is just going to be one single crochet in each of these 12 stitches. So you can fasten off. This is only a cinching tail that we need. And we have to finish stuffing it. We need to make sure his head is round on top, not pointed. And it doesn't matter if it's wrinkly, there's hair that's going on top. So if you don't get it as full as you want it and it the cinch wrinkles a little bit, that's okay. So here you can see the fat cheeks and from beyond there we're going to have the eyes. So there's plenty of room for everything. So, back up again. We're going to go in the front loop and out the front loop. Probably helps if I'm on camera. In the front loop, out the front loop. all the way around. When you get back around, you're going to pull to close that cinch. Pop across, make a knot. Both ways. And then we can weave.
So this is what you should have. Let me move everything. Try to get this guy all in here. No, not gonna happen. This is what you should have. So next will be the belly patch. And then we'll do the arms because we can sew it on easier without the arms being in the way. So we're gonna do the belly patch next. So grab your white. So starting off with our white, we're going to chain one and turn every single round. Let's start with that. I'm not gonna tell you every single round to chain one and turn. Although I might do it out of, <laughs> out of habit, but um, make your slip knot tail a little bit longer just so you can use it later to kind of tie everything together on the inside. I'm going to chain 13. We're going to chain 13. That's my 13 chains. I'm going to do one single crochet in each stitch all the way back up, which will be 12 stitches. This video is going to have chapters too, guys. So if you're looking for something specific, go down to the description box below. And you'll see it written there and you can just click on, you know, arms, belly patch, legs, foot. And if you click on the number, it should take you right to that in the video. Easy peasy. So your next round is going to be an every, every round f until I say so is going to be an increase round. Well, just about every round. So this round is going to be an increase round. So this first stitch, you're going to put two single crochets in. And then you're going to do 10 single crochets across. The reason I chose this to do this in single crochets and not half doubles is because there was too much black showing through. So it will take us a little bit longer to do this, especially when you're not counting. <laughs> so this is my 10th stitch this here is your turning over stitch that's what I call it so just make sure you're getting underneath both pieces it likes to turn over so a lot of people don't know that it's there but there is a stitch at the end I want you to put two single crochets into that Your next round, you're going to start in the first stitch. So pull this back. This is the first stitch, not this one. This is the first stitch. You're going to put two single crochets into that. And now you're going to do 12 stitches across. That's my 12th stitch. And your turning over stitch here gets two single crochets. Your next round is going to be one single crochet in each of these 16 stitches. So your next round is going to be an increase round. We're going to put two single crochets into this first space. We're going to do 14 stitches across. And in this last stitch, you're going to put two single crochets. So should have 18 stitches. Your next increase round is going to be two single crochets in the first stitch. You're going to do 16 stitches across and then two single crochets in the last stitch. And 
And in this last space, you're going to put two single crochets, chain one, turn your work. For the next seven rows, I just, you should have 20 stitches. So for the next seven rows, so that's just going to be up his, his torso. You're just going to put one single crochet in each of these 20 stitches. So this is my seventh <coughs> row. And we're moving up the torso. Let's get that out of the way. Show you. So it goes just about down, like as close to the crotch as you can. Some of the haunches need to be showing. So if it's too wide and your haunches aren't showing, then you're crocheting too loosely. So now that we're moving up the torso, the torso starts to come in right around here. So we need to start to decrease. So this is where you should be. So we're going to start our decreases. You're going to see it written as SC to TOG. And that just simply means to single crochet two together. Let's chain one and turn your work. So we're going to SC to TOG. We're going to decrease the first two stitches. And now we're going to do 16 stitches across and then single crochet two tog the last two stitches, decrease the last two. So I have these last two stitches left. It's hard to see it this way, but if you turn it over, you can see the two V's. And I want you to decrease those two. Chain one and turn your work. Next, I just want you to put one single crochet in each of these 18 stitches. Chain one, turn your work. We're going to decrease again, and then we're going to do a number of rows. So we're going to decrease this first two. So SC2 tog. We're going to do 14 single crochets across, and then single crochet together, decrease the last two. So I'm over here on the other side and I'm going to single crochet together the last two. Chain one, turn your work. You should have 16 stitches. You see the shape that we have for the body. You should have 16 stitches. So now you're going to do seven rows of one single crochet in each of those 16 stitches. So this is about where you are. So I'll see you back after your seven rows. So that's my seven rows. So this is what it should look like at this point. We're going to start to decrease again. So we're going to decrease these first two. We're going to do 12 single crochets across and decrease the last two.
Oops. <laughs> so that's my 12 stitches. I was just going to keep going. And I'm going to decrease the last two. Make sure you're getting under both pieces of that stitch. Chain one, turn your work. You should have 14 stitches. I just want you to do one single crochet in each of these 14 stitches. So we're going to decrease again, decrease these first two stitches, now we're going to do 10 single crochets across and decrease the last two. That's my 10th stitch. I got two stitches left. If you turn it sideways, you can see them. And I'm going to decrease those two. So you should have 12 stitches at this point. One side always comes in different than the other side. So if yours looks like mine, and you know, this side always comes in more. So, for the next seven rows, you're going to put one single crochet in each of these 12 stitches. So, that's my seven rows. And again, one side always decreases differently than the other side. You can compensate when you sew. So we're just about, I know black is so hard to see on red, but we're just about, this is the neck. If that gives you any indication. <laughs> it's so hard to see, but uh, this is what you should have at this point. With the neck being here. So we're just about done few more decreases and then some straight rows so this next one is decreasing your first two single crochet two together and then you're going to do eight single crochets across and then decrease the last two Another decrease round. We're going to decrease the first two. We're going to do six single crochets. And then we're going to decrease the last two. Next round is just going to be one single crochet in each of these eight stitches. We're going to keep decreasing. So SC2 tog. So decrease these first two. And now we're going to do four single crochets. Decrease the last two. You should have six stitches. For the next five rows, you're going to put one single crochet in each of these six stitches. So this is my last row. So this is what you should have. 
Your straggler should be on this side, and you should be on this side, if you did everything right. So, now we're going to single crochet around and clean up these edges, just so it looks better, so it's not so scraggly. If you're going to start in the same stitch, because you want this to be a little more rounded so I want you to chain one to be able to start in that same space and that way that'll be rounded so you're gonna stick your hook into every single space which you can clearly see them um, you'll have a sp space to go at the end of or first beginning of every round Try not to do it tight because you don't want this to roll. So this is what it should look like so far. I'm just, and I've been putting, I'm going to tell you, two, to keep it round, two stitches in the same stitch, and I left my straggler open so that I can use it later to tie a knot. So you've got stitches up here, so you don't really need to continue across to go over to where you started. You can just fasten off here. You need a long sewing tail. So this cleans it up a little bit. Makes it look a little bit better for a belly patch. So I'm going to start to sew mine on. So let's pin this in place. So this goes right up to the very, very tippy top of the neck. The pins I'm using are called wig pins. Now we start to sew. You can do any kind of stitch you want. So I'm back up at the top where I started. My last stitch is going to be in there. And I am going to walk myself down to my straggler by just going into the same hole and popping out somewhere. So again, I'm not sewing. I'm just going down the same hole. I'm coming out a hole just to walk myself down to the bottom. So I'm going to pop out I'm going to tie a double knot Cut my long piece off And then I'm going to weave the knot away Go back down the same stitch you tied your knot in and pop out. 
And now your knot is on the inside of your doll. There we have our belly patch. So next we will do arms. So for our arms, we are starting with white. We're going to change to black part way. <clears throat> so first we're going to build the thumbs. So you're going to start with a magic ring of six single crochets. For the next two rows, you're going to put one single crochet in each of these six stitches. So I'm just going to count to 12 because I know where my stitches are. But if you're not too familiar, I would use a stitch marker. So I'm going to flip this right side in, right side out, <laughs> right side in. So I weaved pretty much my tail in as you saw. So your last round is going to be one single crochet and an increase. That's one single crochet. So your next stitch is going to get the increase of two single crochets in the same space. This will give you nine stitches. That is it. That is our thumb. So you can fasten off. This will need a sewing tail. So somewhere along the line, we're going to sew this thumb onto our hand. We're not so we're we're so we're building it to our hand, but we have to sew it on to build it to our hand. This is going to be our hand. So that's the thumb. It's crocheted on. So that's what we have. It's just a little wee guy. We're going to put stuffing in it though. So as far as the hand goes, <clears throat> it's very squared off. So I actually started with a chain, not a magic ring. So chain 11 to start the hand. That's my 11. So I have 10 working chains because this is number 11. Your first stitch, you're going to see it's written with brackets. Brackets on my channel means the same space. So two single crochets into this first stitch. And then I want you to do eight single crochets across. That's my eight single crochets across. You should have one stitch left. You're going to put four single crochets and you're going to follow the curve. It's going to want to curve around and I want you to follow that because we will be working on the other side of the chain. So this is your slip knot. Pull that closed if it opens. So now we're working on the other side of the chain and that's what people refer to as working in the round. And now I want you to do eight single crochets. Now 
That's my eight single crochets. I have one stitch left. And I'm going to put two single crochets in it, just like I did when I started. So that's what you should have. For the next five rows, this should be 24 stitches. You're going to put one single crochet in each of these 24 stitches. So use your stitch marker. And I will see you on the other side. So this is the end of my five rows. We're going to sew the thumb on. We're going to use three stitches. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm losing my voice. So if you count the tw starting at the 12th stitch, Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. You've got these three stitches here on this corner. Those are the ones I want you to use to sew your thumb on. And I know this time I'm being very specific. So that's your thumb. I know right now it looks very, very small compared to the hand, but he doesn't have much of a thumb. I mean, he is a cat, <laughs> after all. We're going to do 11 single crochets, which is why I told you where to sew. Stick with my, <laughs> stick with my pattern. So 11 single crochets will take you to the thumb. That's my 11 single crochets. And now I want you to SC to tog. So I'm going to use my sew spot. And then one of the stitches on my thumb to do a decrease. And now I want you to do four single crochets. That'll be around your thumb. And now here, I want you to grab this stitch and then the hand and do another decrease. So just decreasing around the thumb and then 10 single crochets back to your marker. So, that brings your thumb up into position where we need it to be. And it also gives you 27 stitches. So your next round is just going to be one single crochet in each of these 27 stitches. So that was my 27 stitches. So now we're going to start to decrease. We're going to do one single crochets and a decrease and this will bring you down to 18 stitches. That's one single crochet. And then we jump right into our decrease. So I'm going to do my invisible decreases in my front loops just because it will be noticeable. So that gives me 18 stitches. 
For the next four rows, I just want you to put one single crochet in each of these 18 stitches. And I will meet you back here to do a color change after that. We're going to go to black. If we're going to stuff this, the thumb gets stuffed. So this is the end of my fourth row and I have to change to black. So I'm going to pull up a loop on my last stitch and I'm going to go to my black. So both of these arms and hands are made the same way. There's no left or right. It is all you know, you just have to turn it in the direction you want when you put your black on it. Because both sides, I mean, you can get both sides to look the same, which is bonus. Because then you can just turn the hand whichever way you want to. So get your weight out of there. And with your black, you're going to do 17 rows. It's just going to be one single crochet in each of these 18 stitches. So this is the end of my 17th row. And I tapered the top of this arm as you can see the holes are different sizes I did two rows of decreases uh, <clears throat> just because we're not crocheting the arms on and I wanted it to look like they were kind of crocheted on so your next round is going to be if you're stuffed if you're not fully stuffed stuff it but your next round is going to be four single crochets and a decrease. That's number one with your marker. That's four single crochets. And then your decrease. I'm doing invisible because my next row is going to be a decrease as well. And I don't want the gapping. So your next round is going to be three single crochets and a decrease and bring you down to 12 stitches. That's one. That's three single crochets. Now I'm just doing regular decreases on this last row. And that is it. You can fasten off. You're going to need a sewing tail to sew it to the body. Finish stuffing it. So I'm going to put the pattern up for the other arm. Go ahead and make your other arm and then we'll meet back and do the black pause part together.
So now that you've got both your arms done, we're going to do this black part to look like it to look like it has paws. Now from the original chain that we did, one, two, three, between the third and fourth row is where I went in and around. So make sure your thumbs are opposing when you do this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, and four. So don't pull this all the way through. One, two, three, and four. I need to be in here. So I'm going to go around down the hole that I'm supposed to be in. I started in the row behind and I'm gonna pop up there's only a couple of stitches in between the two so I'm gonna pop up two stitches over and then you're gonna to want to pull on this a little bit and then go back down the same way and now pop out where you started Pull on that, pull on that, make it look like a paw. Yeah, I went further down on this other side for some reason. I might, um, I might do that again. I didn't pull overly tight. Like you really pull on the feet. I didn't really do that with the paws. So I'm gonna tie a double knot. Go back down the same stitch that knot is in pop out my black give that a little tug to pull that knot down inside your doll there you can't see the black through that so they're maybe not identical but close enough Close enough. So, we need to sew. <laughs> so you just need to make sure that your arm is, your or your thumb is sticking away from the body, like in the front. So I cinched the top of this closed, which is why I did my decreases. And then I mattress stitch this to the stuffed animal to um, make it look like it was crocheted on. One knot's probably fine. Make sure your thumb is sticking out. And then like I said, I uh, mattress stitch this. So I'm going to go in and pick up some neck area and then I'm going to come up here and pick up some arm. Now you don't have to pull this right away which makes the mattress stitch the perfect stitch for this area. So this is where you can now pull. If you're using acrylic, it will not break. So as you can see, that makes our arm pop up and then we gotta do a mattress stitch all around this area to keep our arm down a bit. But it's a really good hold, this mattress stitch.
anyway that's how I chose to sew it on but I mean you could choose to do whatever you want to whatever you wanted to do so now that I've got that bottom part I'm just gonna pull that down and then put my couple of stitches here on the back part and then if you look at your own doll it's hard to tell now I mean you'll know but it's it'll be hard to tell whether it's crocheted on or sewn on it's just a really better way to to do stuff so So, get your other arm sewn on and I'll meet you right back here. So, my arms are all sewn on. So, the, ta the tail's pretty long. Uh, so, we'll start... Um, doing the tail to get that out of the way and then the smallest bits is just going to be doing his face and then he's going to be done so the tail is what we're going to do next so you're going to need to grab your white so starting with your white because the end of his tail is white that's why we're doing it you're going to start with a magic ring of six single crochets again if you don't like the magic ring you can do a chain two and put everything in the first stitch So in this part of the tail, we're going to incorporate something called the waterfall stitch. It's a pattern stitch, but it's a very easy pattern stitch to do. So don't let that intimidate you. Your first round is going to be two single crochets in each stitch around. After the first stitch, that's when the marker goes in. And then stitch number two can follow. Two single crochets in each stitch around will give you 12 stitches. Your next round is going to be one single crochet and an increase. That's one single crochet and then your next stitch gets the increase of so two single crochets in the same space and repeat Your next round is going to be two single crochets and an increase. That's number one. That's number two. And then your increase of two single crochets in the same space. And repeat. So it could be a total of 24 stitches. So, you should have 24 stitches. For the next 7 rows, I just want you to put one single crochet in each of these 24 stitches. And then we're going to change to black. So, this is the end of my 7th rows. I'm not going to stuff it yet. I'll stuff it in a second. Oops. On this last stitch we're going to change to uh, black. So once we have our black going here 
We're going to do one single crochet in each stitch around. However, I'm going to incorporate the waterfall stitch, which gives this effect. So I'm going to do that every fifth stitch. Other than that, you're just going to do one single crochet in each stitch. So I'll, I'll do it with you. That's number one. So on every fifth stitch, that's my four single crochets, I'm going to go down two rows. So this row and then this row, I'm going to go down staying underneath the stitch I should be in as best I can. It works in a swirl on a spiral when we when we do amigurumi. So drop down on this side of the stitch and you're going to pull up. So you bring it up to the same height that you are yarn over and just finish the stitch. Just a single crochet, just a long single crochet. So this takes place of this stitch. So don't go back into this stitch. You have to go into this stitch. So you're going to be skipping one, but you're not really because that stitch takes place of it. So then I did five more st or four more stitches. And then I did the same thing again, dropping down two rows, pulling up, finishing the stitch. And the fourth stitch ends off that row. So then this is what you get. It just looks like the black is incorporated with the with the white. So it's just a little fun thing to do on your project. So we're going to have to stuff as we go because <laughs> it's a tail. Not that we don't have plenty of room, but... Um, Stuff it good, but don't stuff it tight. Just because it's a tail and you don't want this thing to be constantly pulling over your doll. So you don't want it. I'm going to I'm gonna pack this white part, but when I start stuffing the black part, I'm just going to kind of do it a little more gently. So for the next 14 rows... You should still have 24 stitches. For the next 14 rows, you're going to put one single crochet in each of these 24 stitches. So this is my 14 rows. So now we're going to turn the tail a little bit just so it when it's sewn on it kind of comes around him. It's just a lot easier when you have a stuffed animal if the tail is not just sticking straight out. You know what I mean? So this is an option. You can choose to do this or not do this if you want your tail turned and follow along with me. If you don't want to turn in your tail and you just want it straight, you're going to do five more rows of just what you've been doing. One single crochet in the 24 stitches. If you want your tail turned, we're going to do... We're, so we have 24 stitches. We're going to divide half and half with two different stitches. So the first 12 stitches are going to be single crochets. So do 12 single crochets. I'm 
just going to make sure that's 12, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. That's 12 single crochets. So it should be on the other side, half and half, right? The next 12 are going to be done in extended single crochets, which means you're going to go into your stitch and pull up a loop. You're going to pull through the first loop and then finish the stitch. So it's almost like doing a double crochet but in single crochet style. So go into your stitch, pull up a loop, you're going to yarn over, pull through one loop, yarn over and finish the stitch. That's an extended single crochet. It is written E-S-C. So you're going to do this until we get back to our marker. And this is how we're going to make the tail turn. Because one of these stitches is taller than the other stitch. So don't be shy about pulling up on it either. You can do that as well. The taller it is, the more of a curve you're going to get. We're going to do that for four more rows. So five rows all together, we're going to do this extended single and singles. We're going to split the two stitches. So we've done one row. We have four more to go. I'll put it on the screen and you'll see it say 12 single crochets, so 12 SC, and then you'll see 12 capital E SC, and that's extended single crochet, which we just talked about. So that is my five rows. So this is what it looks like. You can slightly see, obviously, where we were doing our extended. You can see on your own. So it's not that noticeable. For the next round, I want you to kind of do it a little bit on the, not tight, but snug side you're just gonna do i mean for the next 12 rows you're gonna do one single crochet in each of these 24 stitches but this next row i want you to do just a little bit snugly just to kind of make the shape happen a little bit better When you stuff this, I haven't started my 12 rows yet. I'm just, I'm on my second row after doing my first one. I just wanted to jump in here and explain to you, when you stuff this, obviously this side is going to get filled out more than the other side so that we stuff the shape into it as well as build the shape into it. So, just letting you know that you will have to stuff the shape as well um, to accentuate it to get a decent uh, a decent curve so this is the end of my 12 rows so as you can see I've stuffed mine to turn with the turn that we crocheted into it Mine is very lightly stuffed, if you can tell by the way I'm squeezing it. So this is very lightly stuffed, and I didn't put any stuffing in here. I mean, I just put it in here, but I pushed it more to the back here so that it'll turn easier. So that's what we got going on now, if you've stuffed it properly. So we're going to start to decrease this next row. We're just about done. We have three more rows to go. This next row is going to be a decrease. So you're going to do two single crochets and a decrease. This will bring you down 18 stitches. 
That's number one. That's number two. You could just do a regular decrease. Whichever decrease you want to do. So, you should have 18 stitches for the next two rows. You're going to put one single crochet in each of these 18 stitches. And that'll be it. You can fasten off with a sewing tail. I will see you on the other side. So this is the end of my two rows and the end of my project. Ugh, if I get in the last stitch. So you can fasten off. We're going to cinch this close. So make sure that you've got whatever stuffing you want in this. Make sure you have it in there. Um, I lightly stuffed mine like I stated already very lightly stuffed mine so I'm not gonna put a whole lot in even for the top I'm just really not going to very lightly and like I said before it's because we don't want the tail to be pulling this doll over all the time so cinch this closed in and out of the front loops Or, or whip stitches if you want. Anyway, you're, you're going to sew this to your doll anyway. This is how I've chosen to do it, but you may have chosen to do something different. Now, you're going to be sewing more than just the top. You're going to be sewing it down so it, it doesn't pop, keep popping out like this. You're going to sew it down so that the curve actually continues around. So I'm just cinching my cinch hole just to make it look a little bit better than, than it was going to. Not that it matters. It's all going to be sewn down and not really seen. So I'm going to pop out. I'm going to pop out back here. Whatever side that I'm going to start to sew on. So you just need to make a decision on if you want it to wrap around get into the middle. Ouch. If you want it to wrap around this side or the other side. So mine goes around the other side on my other doll. So I think I'm going to make this one the opposite so I'm going to pop back over and pop down over here to start my mattress stitch so just make sure this is going to be exactly how low you want it where you want it So, that's what mine looks like once I pull, and then it, this starts to pop back up. That's what I was talking about. So, I had to come along the side and make it stay just using the side here. So I've gone down quite a ways actually. Hopefully that's enough to to hold it in place. And then I'm just going to pop around to the other side. Just through and through here. 
I'm gonna pull too tight. And then I'm gonna whip stitch this, er, whip stitch, mattress stitch this side down. So you may still kind of want to do something with the tail, but mine doesn't really stick out. I know it's so hard to see because it's black. Let me zoom out a bit. Mine doesn't really stick out too much. Like you can see the gap here because of the this, but it, it still curves around like a cat tail. So I'm satisfied with that. I'm happy with that. There we go. So now we've got everything done that's big. And the only thing left to do is his head, which now looks really, really tiny and stupid. But trust me, once we get all the ears and everything and the muzzle and stuff on, um, it's not going to look as stupid. So um, I think next we'll do the muzzle. So the muzzle... Starts with a magic ring of six single crochets. Your first round is going to be two single crochets in each stitch all the way around. As per normal. <laughs> I can get into it. There we go. So, after the first stitch, that's where your marker goes. Stitch number two can go in that same space, each space around. This will give you a total of 12 stitches. Your next round is going to be one single crochet and an increase. This will bring you up to 18 stitches. That's number one with your marker. And then your next stitch will get the increase of two single crochets in the same space. And repeat. Next round is going to be two single crochets and an increase, and this will bring you up to 24 stitches. Your next round is going to be three single crochets and an increase. This will bring you up to 30 stitches. Your last increase round is going to be four single crochets and an increase. And this will bring you up to 36 stitches. That's as far as we increase. So this is what you should have. This tiny little thing. For the next four rows, you're going to put one single crochet in each of these 36 stitches. And that'll be it for the muzzle part. So this is the end of my four rows. And that's it. You can fasten off.
You're going to need a sewing tail. So let's set this aside for now and we'll make the red nose and then we'll get that all done at the same time. So I'll get your red. We're going to start by chaining five. Your first stitch is going to get two single crochets. And then you're going to do two single crochets across. And then your last stitch here is going to get four single crochets. Well, it's not technically your last stitch. Your last stitch of the chain, but we're going to be working around. So follow this curve as you go and we're going to work around on the other side of this chain. Make sure you're going into the stitch right next to the slip knot and we're going to do two single crochets just like we did on the other side. And then in this last stitch you're going to do two single crochets. So I'm just weaving in my tail at the back. Tiny, tiny. I'm just going to cut this off. I'm going to use the stitch marker for the next round. This first stitch that you go into, you're going to put two single crochets into it. So mark your first stitch so you know where you started. Put that second single crochet in that same space. And this next stitch is going to get the same thing. Two single crochets. Then I want you to do two single crochets across. Right here at the top you've got four stitches and I want you to put two single crochets in each of them. Now I want you to do two single crochets across and these last two stitches I want you to do two single crochets in each just like we did on the other side. So this is what you should have. For the next three rows we're just going to put one single crochet in each of these 20 stitches. So this is the end of my three rows. You can fasten off. with a sewing tail. So that's what you should have. So this gets sewn to that. I know right now it looks funny. So let's get some of this sewed on. So I'm going to put some stuffing in here, but I'm probably going to be putting more in it after. This takes up a lot of his face. So it goes right down to his chest, like right down. Just so we have room for the eyes.
So I've made sure that I've got it's packed pretty good. But I've got to put a split in it. So down here it's still kind of loosey. Loosey goosey-ish. So before we sew our red on, let's get a piece of white. He's got a bit of a split. We have to accentuate. I'm going to turn him this way. So go down as far as you can to the bottom. Try to come up. near or in the magic ring. And you're just gonna loop around. Now, when I went back down, I went into the hole above where I started. So we're gonna pull to make that little bit of an indent. And then I'm going to go down and pop out the same hole that I started in. The time I knot. So it's vague, but it's there. There, so the red part, believe it or not, is the hardest part because it doesn't really hold a whole lot of stuffing and you have to try to get the shape to sew it on properly. So we're going to put it down over the magic ring so to speak. Pin it so you get an idea of what I'm talking about. So we just went in and out of the magic ring underneath there. And we're going to just cover it. There. I know, it looks funny. Trust the process. I'm going to show you my other guy so that you understand what it's going to look like. So he does actually look like Sylvester after. I know the process is funny. It's hard to see it for some people. That's why I like to show my other doll. So I always end up with two because I have to make the first one. Do the pattern and all that. Get it right. And then I do the video. So <laughs> I always end up with two dolls so I can... Generally, if I haven't sold it or given it to one of my grandkids, I can generally show you in the video the process. Because some people are like, what the heck is going on? Sometimes things look really weird while they're in the process. So, So I didn't put any more stuffing in what I had her initially put in. I just left it the way it was. It's pretty full anyway, but... So once you're done, you can just weave. 
So let's do the eyes. It's just felt with your hot glue gun. So turn your hot glue gun on and get your felt and we'll do the eyes and then while that's drying, which is instant because it's hot glue, <laughs> uh, we'll do the ears and the hair and then we'll put everything together and we'll be all done. So I have my white and my black. You're going to have to just measure your doll to see how much space you have for this part but um, leave leave a bit of forehead like this is even too tall because I need a little bit more forehead to be shown for for it to kind of match him but I can cut that down after I'll do the shape Put this tail really on the wrong side. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta, there's my head. It's hard to see with that there. I think I'm gonna cut the bottom off of mine a little bit. I don't quite want it that long. Just a little bit. Yeah, that's good for me. It leaves about four rows worth of head. See, he's already starting to look like Sylvester. <laughs> so, that's what I've got. So I'm going to put them on my doll before I do any gluing, just to make sure it's going to look alright. And this is just a rough. So if you look at a cartoon picture of him, his eyeballs just kind of go in the middle. I have to move mine down a bit. So his eyes just kind of go in the middle, like that. I'm going to do mine upside down, I don't have much room on this table. If you're using regular glue to do this, um, oh, I just got glue on his arm. Um, this might turn yellow, so I would advise against it. Hot glue's the best, the best way to go here. So now that his eyeballs are on, let's get to doing his ears. So we start with black for the ears and we're going to make a magic ring of six single crochets. Your first round is going to be two single crochets in each stitch. Your next round is going to be three single crochets and an increase. <clears throat> so generally we would do one single crochet and an increase. That's the norm. But I wanted a smaller number than 18. So this will actually give me 15 stitches. So that's three and then your increase. That is my doggy and his nails. <laughs> 
He's decided to come down to my studio today and visit me. So I should have 15 stitches for the next three rows. You're just going to put one single crochet in each of these 15 stitches. So that's my three rows. This is what you should have. We're going to decrease now. We're going to do a three single crochet decrease. So I'm just going to do a normal decrease. So you should have 12 stitches for the next round. I want you to just do one single crochet in each of these 12 stitches. Your next round is going to be two single crochets and a decrease. This brings you down to nine stitches. For the next two rows, I just want you to put one single crochet in each of these nine stitches and then you can fasten off. So I'm just going to count to 18 instead of using my marker. So that's my 18 stitches. I'm just about at the end of my roll. So you can fasten off. Now before I send you off to make the other ear, um, we're going to do the white part and then I'll put the two, the two up at the same time to do the other ear. So that's your one ear. You can sew this on any way you want if you wanted to keep it open. Um, I'm not. I'm going to, I'm not stuffing mine either. So I'm just going to whip stitch this. So when I sew the white part on, this will concave a little bit. So that's what I mean if you can see it. Oh, I can't see that. Concave, so it sinks in here. So let's do the white part. So it's built flat, obviously. So we're going to do a chain four. And then of course, three single crochets back up. Chain one, turn your work. One single crochet in each of these three stitches. Chain one, turn your work. You're going to do one single crochet. This next stitch will get an increase of two single crochets in the same space. And then this last stitch will just be one single crochet. 
chain one, turn your work. So we're going to increase in the center. So you're going to do two single crochets. This next stitch will get the increase. And then one single crochet. Chain one, turn your work. I want you to do one single crochet. This next stitch is going to get an extended single crochet, which is you go into your space, pull up a loop. You're going to yarn over and pull through one loop, then yarn over and finish the stitch. That's an extended single crochet. Your next stitch is going to get a half double. Your next stitch is going to get a, oops, an extended a single crochet. Then your last stitch is going to get a single. So it just gives a nice rounded top. That's where you're going to fasten off of them in that last stitch with a sewing tail to sew it to the inside of the ear. And of course the rounded part gets sewn into the concaved part. Just like that. So go ahead and make your other ear. Sew all this together. Sew everything together. And then I'll meet you right back here. So, I've got my ears done. I'm just going to show you. I'm probably not going to sew on camera because it's going to be difficult. So, his ears kind of sit. Let me try to squeeze in here. So, he's got a bunch of tuft of hair that, that's going to go up here. So, his ears actually come out the side of his head. Like that. I know it's funny. Here, I'll show you the one that's already done. I can't seem to get him into position properly. So this is my other guy. So his ears come out the side of his head. Funny like that. And then this tuft of hair is on top. So when I move the hair, you can kind of see the shape of his head and where the ears are. So that's where you're going to sew them on. And you can sew them on any way you want. So those are my ears, all sewn on. Starting to look a little bit like Sylvester. It'll be the, the whisker hair and then this tuft of hair on his head that'll that'll finish the job. So let's do the tuft of hair first. Cause we don't really have to brush all that out. So I just want you to take something. I'm just gonna use my cell phone. And you're black and wrap. You don't have to do it a whole lot because we're not putting a whole lot out there but we do unravel it so it looks like it's more than it is. And then just cut this. These little pieces you can just get rid of. So you take this hook, you can take a smaller hook, you can do whatever you want. You can take a a rug hooker if you wanted to. Okay, let me try to find a better angle. So fold this in half like this if you can see my what I'm doing here. Try to find the yellow part. So fold it in half like this. 
find an area in your head that you want to pick up. And now it's super dark. Put that on your hook. Pull it through. Pull it up so you have a loop. You're going to yarn over and pull this through the loop. All of it. And then pull to make that knot tight so you just made a knot. So that's what you're how you're going to attach the hair. Just up in this area. And then we're going to unwind it all. And then just kind of make it messy. And then once you're done, you can just start to unravel. So you should have four strands, and you're just going to unravel two. So, we're just going to mess it all up now. Um, I wouldn't really brush it. And then we're just going to cut it off. So it's a little shorter. And sticks up. Maybe a little shorter than that. There. Something like that. So, now to do the white for his whiskers. I used a Kleenex box. So, I've got my Kleenex box and I'm using DK weight for this hair. And I'm going to wrap long ways because I'm going to pull the whiskers through and through, like all the way through. So you can wrap this as much as you want. It's completely up to you how much hair that you put on your, for your whiskers. So that's good enough for me. I'm going to cut it. And I'm going to start with this. If I add more, I add more. So this is put on a little bit differently. So I am going to thread quite a few, maybe three, four, because I'm going to put them all through at the same time. I've got four, you got four strands in my needle, and I'm going to go into my muzzle. Try to pop out evenly. And pull through. Making sure that they stay even. Now I'm going to cut these obviously because they're super long. But that's how. And then I'm just going to work down the muzzle. So again I thread four pieces. So where I went in here, I'm going to just go over a couple of stitches, pop out a couple of stitches over on this side, again just pull until it's even-ish. Now when we unravel this and start brushing it all out, it's going to get really fuzzy. For now, that's a, I'm just, just going to set this aside. You're going to need what's called a slicker brush to brush all this out. I also like to use one of these to start it before I end it with the slicker brush. 
So all of this needs to be unraveled because it's just way easier to brush out once you start to unravel. So same thing we did with the hair. You don't have to unravel all four pieces. The DK weight has three pieces, not four. But if you're using four weight, you don't need to unravel all of it. And like I said, it's not going to be this long. We're, we are going to cut it. So, I'm going to show you what happens when you don't. When you don't um, unravel it. It just doesn't brush out. It just breaks. That's what happens when you don't unravel it. So I got all my hair done and that is it. We're all done this guy. Zoom out a bit so you can see him. It's hard to uh, <laughs> get his whole body in there but thanks for joining me guys. I'll see you in the next video.